Hello, welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course. We're in the process of writing a song, which we've called Project One, and in doing so, we're gonna learn a feature about Cubase uh, in every video. I also want us to make genuine progress with the song every time, so I want some practical benefit to come out of our little mini session. What I've chosen to do today is get us to a stage where we've got eight bars of drum beat with a fill at the end. So seven bars of regular beat plus a one bar fill, that's our task. Now in order to accomplish that, we're gonna need a few tools. And what I mean by the word tools is these controls up at the top of the, the, the application. You'll become very adept at using all of these tools. They are absolutely essential. And we need to do a little bit of pre-configuration before we actually get up and running with these tools because Cubase has two options for what happens when you right click. And the option that I use is that when I right click with the mouse, I get a little pop up of all of the tools. I think this is really the only way to work as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the other option gives you basically like a, a, a smaller version, a truncated version of the menus at the top of the application. I'm not a big fan of that. We set that right click behavior in our preferences box and it's in editing tools. And if we say show toolbox on right click, that's the option that I recommend you set. While we're here, we'll have a quick look at this crosshair cursor. I've actually changed these options on my system just today. I'm constantly tweaking and trying new features. And in preparation for this video, I thought, you know what? I don't usually use the um, show horizontal line and I've just engaged it. What these two vertical and horizontal lines do and the line color, and the mask width here, all of these options give us this thing. That red line with a vertical and horizontal line, that's what we're talking about. And we're going to be using that today. So I recommend you turn those features on. And if you want to set them exactly the same as mine, that's great. As you can see, I have all of the other three options set. We're not going to go into great detail about them. Zooming is quite a big topic and we'll cover that another time. This um, show extra info literally just has a little pop-up box that tells you some information about parts as you're hovering around them. Just turn it on, no reason not to. And the bottom one is totally self-explanatory. It, it's really, really fringe. I'm not gonna waste your time with it. Just turn it on and leave it. We've got to get this eight bars of drum beat into our um, application. And Groove Agent has a neat little feature uh, that you can pick a pattern up and drag it straight into the editor. I'm going to do that. I'll turn the volume down so that I can talk over the top of it. When you pick these things up, by default, I have Groove Agent. You can just hear it making a noise in the background. There's our crosshatch. See it? As I hover around the screen, it's telling me where it's going to drop the part. And the um, just where my mouse is trying to be, if I move the mouse, it'll it'll disappear again. But that's the corner. That's going to be the bottom left-hand corner of the part as I drop it. So I want it to be right at the beginning of the song. And there we have it. Now, I said I wanted an eight-bar part, and there's only four bars there. But I also want this fill. I'm going to drag this out. I'm just going to throw it all the way over here at the moment. We'll see why shortly. We're done with Groove Agent now. We can close that down. And the way that we um, repeat parts in Cubase, there are two different ways you can do it, duplicate and repeat. If you select whatever it is that you want to replicate, go to Edit, Functions. Here are the two options. Now, I exclusively use Duplicate. Repeat is for when you want to make many copies of a thing. And there's also an option inside it to allow you to have shared copies. But basically, you keep one master copy where your actual real data lives. And then if you make 63 copies afterwards, they're all simply mirrors, ghosts of the original version. And that means that you can edit your original version and all of your other um, 63 copies will update as well. I don't use shared copies. I used to, and I've actually abandoned it as a concept. So I don't use repeat events, but I've just mentioned that it's there in case you want to check it out. I use duplicate. I figure, unless I'm, if I'm repeating an awful lot of parts, which I very, very rarely do, then yes, I'd use repeat. But this is my go-to method of choice. If I want to repeat something three times, I'll just duplicate it three times. It's the same functionality. 
Now this is a function that you use so often in Cubase that you absolutely do not want to have to go into this menu option every time. That's a real pain. But can you see that we've got a shortcut here, Control D. So if I select this part and press the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of it, then I'll reselect this part. And now I'm going to press Control D and we've done the same job. Now, as you saw last time, I've got um, a keyboard shortcut application and duplicate selected is one of my keys um, on the EK58. So that's actually how I do it. I could press Control D, I'm just too lazy. So we're doing really well. We've got eight bars of drum beat and we're getting quite close to reaching our target. What we need to do now is get rid of this last bar so that we can move our fill in place. The way that we do that is by right clicking on our tool options and we're going to pick the scissors. Our crosshairs appear again and now I can click in the part. It's auto selected this last bit. Now I could press delete on the keyboard but instead I'm going to choose to right click and choose my eraser and erase the part that way. I can then right click and just let go again immediately. It'll select my um, select tool, which is the default left hand tool. And now I can pick this part up and drag it over here. And as you can see, as we get closer to the, to the to where I want to drop it, the grid line is telling me exactly where I want to be. Now, the reason it's jumping a beat at a time as we move left to right is because of a thing called snap. And the snap button is this fella here, snap on off. And there are many times when you'll want to turn snap off. If you're doing really, really fine control, you can see it's totally flexible now, particularly when you're moving audio and you want it to be, you're using your ears or maybe you're looking at a wave uh, and you want a particular peak to be, you know, in a certain place. There's many, many times when you'll turn grid off. So you're going to need to learn that function. And the way that it's snapping is also really interesting. See, it's always snapping to the beat. That's because we've currently got the snap mode or snap type set to grid. However big the grid is, that's what we'll snap to. Now there's another brilliant snap feature that I use an awful lot. And to demonstrate it, I'm just gonna turn the, um, the snap off for a moment and move this part so that it's in between two beats. I'm going to turn snap back on again, but this time I'm going to choose grid relative. And what this now means is that every time we move, we're going to jump forwards in beat sized divisions, but maintain our relative position in the song. These are all really, really common things. You're going to want to learn all of this stuff. This is great. I can switch back to grid and then pick it up and just nudge it and it'll drop on the bar and move it back to where we wanted it to be. Some of the other features in the snap options are a little bit much for us at the moment. We'll come back to them as we need them. So now we've got three parts and I want to stick them all together. I right click and select my glue tool and then click and click. That does the job. Now I'm just gonna undo those operations by clicking the undo button. If you're gluing lots of stuff together like this, uh, there, is, there are better ways to go about it. You can select all of the parts. See, I just clicked and dragged and it made this little selection rectangle. Select all of your parts, single click anywhere in the part, and they're all now glued together. Well, actually, I'll just undo that. What I tend to do more commonly is select the parts using my select tool and only when I'm ready to glue them together will I switch to the glue tool. It really doesn't matter. You're going to find a way that you like to work, but I'm just showing you all of these various little shortcuts. Final thing that we want to do is to listen to this eight bars um, of music, but I actually want to listen to it on a repeat. So I wanna be able to cycle this eight bar part and that's really easy to do. The cycle feature is in the transport control and it's this button here, activate cycle. And you can see that it's the numeric keypad slash. If I press that button, you can see this blue bar at the top for four bars. And you can also see there's a little white triangle at the front and the end, they're called locators. 
Now, manipulating your cycle range is something that you'll become quite ninja at, but at, at, at first it can be a little bit fiddly. When you head into the locator bar, you'll see that you've got two different symbols on your cursor for the top and the bottom. When you're at the top, you pick it up and you move the whole thing. But the bottom is a zoom. I've clicked and dragged, and now I'm zooming around wherever I've clicked. It's a little bit disorienting. So let me get back to the beginning of the song again and I'll do that a bit more carefully. So I'm gonna click on bar five in the bottom half of the cycle range. And then I'm gonna drag down with my mouse. And there I am zooming in on that point. And if I go up with my mouse, I zoom out and you can see that eventually it gets to the stage where I've passed the point where it can zoom any further and still be at the left-hand side of the song. So there's your zoom function. And again, you'll get, you'll get used to using this over time, but the number of times when you'll accidentally pick the wrong tool and zoom when you're meant to move the locators, it's going to happen. Now I'm going to pick the left, the right hand locator up and move it to bar nine, pick the left locator up and move it to bar one, press dot on my numeric keypad, and I can now press space and we'll play the song. So this is the first pattern of four bars. And now we've started the second pattern, which was the repeated section. And here's the fill. And round we go again. So that's going to carry on playing until I press the space bar. And then the song stops. When the song's in a stopped state, both the space bar, uh, that operates as both an on and off, but the enter key also gets you going. And then I press the space bar. Okay, so we've done some good work. We learned quite a few really important tools there, and we have eight bars of drum beat to play with. That's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you did, and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.